Welcome to the Lodge. You've accessed the Lodge Cast Experience. Warning, warning, dangerous spoilers ahead. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Lodge Cast. Welcome. We are the original three back in the place that started it all, the Burbank 16, in the vehicle that started it all, the Matmobile. Woo! Good to be Good back. back. I am your Lodge Master. With me as always is Brother Bishke. Good to be back. And Brother Lucas. Howdy. And tonight we have the pleasure, hopefully, of seeing a film called Hotel Artemis. Artemis. What strange paths lead us to these strange places. <laughs> Artemis is part of us. I've seen very little fanfare about this movie. Yeah, I did not. I had no zero awareness until we. I saw a trailer in the theater of another movie we were seeing, which I think was Upgrade. It was, and I zoned out through like halfway through the trailer because I thought it was a John Wick spinoff. For some reason, I think there's there's that hotel in John Wick where all the assassins go and check in their weapons and all that. And I thought that this was just like part of the John Wick universe and I was like, ugh, I couldn't be less interested. But then as it went on, I'm like, this is just Hotel Artemis. This is something and, else and, entirely. And, and yeah, there, there might have even been a, a spotting or a sighting of the Salad Dragon scene in the trailer. Or the trailer had a Salad Dragon type of vibe. There was something going on where I, I think I leaned over to, to you and said, when the trailer has a Salad Dragon in it, we gotta go. Yeah. And so I perked up when I saw Jodie Foster. Haven't seen a Jodie Foster movie in a long time. Yeah. This, yeah. What was the last one I we probably it, saw it, in the it, theater? Contact. She, like, Elysium. No. For me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Elysium. Which definitely. Was definitely. A, was a definite low point in my opinion for her. Well, it just wasn't much to do. It was. A she cool idea, was putting but... on a very strange accent in that movie that vacillated from German to Italian to Nell. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is definitely going to be the Jodie Foster show. She looks cantankerous and like she's really pouring herself into it. So yeah, I mean she's she's an American legend. So we got to pay our respects to old Foster. Yeah, not yeah, ex- very excited. I'm excited. I'm not. Ex- I'm not expecting good thing, but I'm expecting to be how it's how it is. I'm looking forward to how this movie is. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited that uh, Sterling K. Brown is also, and I think this is the first uh, feature movie I've seen him in, like in a, on a big screen role. I think, and I think he's amazing. He so is that, amazing. That, that, I think that elevates it along with Jodie Foster. We might be getting a little bit more than we bargained for tonight. Let's stay, let's stay cautiously optimistic. Yeah, Are you, Jeff it's, Goldblum it's, isn't it? Well, yeah, that's I don't that's, spoil the, it, but that's yeah, what Jeff we were referencing what a, a little crazy bit with the uh, yeah the trailer. Yeah, yeah. and Bishki, I think you may have advertently or inadvertently stumbled onto kind of a zen approach to the movies we see you're not excited about what it is you're excited about how it is yeah which puts me in a very good place for this especially once we start puffing a little bit before we go in so uh, my expectation is less than zero i think this looks like a giant mess i like the (laughs) fact that it's contained it's like a single location as far as i know like um, and, and, and to me, that kind of separates, you know, the, the the amateurs from the pros. If you're able to keep the action rising, you know, in a very uh, entertaining kind of way with the stakes and all. Um, so we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see what goes down in we Hotel Artemis. Uh, Hotel Fartemis. <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> I was wondering when that was going to be dropped, and it's dropped early. We're going to check into the hotel for you. Then on the other side, we'll leave our TripAdvisor review. Stay tuned. Love and light. Love and light. Love and light you. We have returned from our stay, our extended stay at the Hotel Artemis. Welcome home, boys! So, before we get into our TripAdvisor review, let's get that special snaps 
Set in riot-torn near-future Los Angeles, Hotel Artemis is an original, high-octane action thriller. <laughs> <laughs> Do go on. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Starring Jodie Foster as the nurse, who runs a secret members-only hospital for criminals. Jodie Foster is joined by an all-star cast that includes Sterling K. Brown, Sophia Botella, Jeff Goldblum, Brian mm-hmm. Tyree Henry, mm-hmm. Jenny Slate, Zachary Quinto, mm-hmm. Charlie Day, and Dave Batista. Check. That's it. That is a package. All right. Of names that's, that have foreign value, which that's... means you can you can raise money on all of them. They're 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 known in uh, you know Korea and far places. They're known the all over the place. Uh, and Jodie Foster is the dead mother of them all. Yeah. yeah. She is. She's got a lot of baggage. She's rip snorting. Ornery. She's the main character. Feisty. She's the main character. She's got salty. Some, she's got some grief in her past. Weathered. She, she's Weathered. got haggard. She's got a little bit Haunted. of Haunted. Okay. She's got a little bit of an East Coast flair going on. Would yeah, you say? Uh, Burrow. Mm-hmm. Bronx. I think much like Johnny Depp, uh, for the past, I don't know, twenty years, he can't just play a movie with his regular face. <laughs> Jodie Foster can't seem to be in a movie with her just regular Jodie Foster voice. But this was much less egregious than Elysium. Uh, what did you guys think of her performance, first of all? Because it's the entire backbone of the movie. It is, yeah. Motherly. It's, uh, it's okay, you know. It's nothing special. It doesn't rank up there with other Foster performances. She's certainly not going to get you know any notices for this. But, hey, she's out there and working, and that's, I think, great for someone her age in this business, you know? I can't imagine that anybody involved with this movie was looking for prestige. I think they just saw somebody else in this crazy cast who they wanted to work with, and that's how they got it rolling, I'd imagine. Mm, yeah. um, it's pretty pulpy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but also sentimental. I mean, I could see them pitching it to Jodie Foster as a drama, sure, like as sure. this like healing kind of making your peace with the, whatever. And you know, it's odd because this 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 feels like uh, similar to Upgrade in that it's like these genre B pictures mm-hmm. that should be funner than they are, sure. and they get so bogged down with trying to like have real gravitas. You know, it's <laughs> well, like we're gonna have our cake and eat it too, and it tastes just off. You well, know, what, like before we before we go on, Bishki. What's your Foster verdict? Because you you've been prepping for this. You've been watching some Foster films. Uh, I did watch her very one of her very first performances, and Alice doesn't live here anymore, where she comes off as a little boy. But um, she's uh, she's been through a lot, kind of like Mel Gibson, her friend. Uh, she's been through a lot. Well, she hasn't the, been like arrested or like no you know, no she no. has no skeleton. I just remember I mean. them reaching out to each other at the Golden Globes at one point. So um, what did you think of her performance? Man, the only one I really liked this whole... I can't really say I liked her or anyone. Okay. Except for Jeff Goldman, but we'll come over. Okay, all right. So, we don't have to belabor the plot too much. It's a hotel for criminals. Not a hotel, well, a hospital slash hotel. Where these, you know, if if you've been robbing a bank and you get shot in the gut, you go to Jody at the Hotel Artemis. And there's a bunch of rules, like no insulting the staff... No killing other patients, yada, yada, yada. Uh, rules were made to be broken, and broken they are. This movie lives or dies on its performances because it is kind of a chamber piece. They're all just... A lot of talk. They're all just kind of uh, moving around the hotel, all these criminals with ulterior motives, and there's a bank heist gone wrong, and our, our ostensible hero, Sterling K. Brown, is that his name? Yeah. Who I thought was, was is always great. As we mentioned before, I, th- I think he, he was strong in this. He ends up, his brother, played by Paperboy from Atlanta. I don't know the actor's Brian name. Brian Tyree Henry, he's great. There we go. Yeah, he is great. He inadvertently steals some diamonds from this drug kingpin that they keep referring to. The Wolf King? The Wolf, wolf. The wolf King. And the that, wolf. We all know that's Jack Nicholson. I mean, they probably right. offered it to yeah. Jack, and, and he was like, King, I'm yeah. too old. Yeah, it's one of those things where if you didn't, they shouldn't have even put Jeff Goldblum in the trailer because you know it's him the entire time. Yeah. But it's strange because they they build up a lot of lore about him, like the Wolf King's almost here, and he's on. It's a big hype. He's on GPS, like one hour till the Wolf King arrives, thirty minutes till the Wolf King arrives. He's like the president of gangsters. Yeah. Um, and this this character owns the hotel. And is, the he the city. Of, is he the head of the Malibu mob? Or He's the head of the Malibu mob, and he owns the diamonds that our hero has 
is is in our hero's possession. So his arrival means chaos is coming, means that's when the action's going to erupt. So they're building up this hype, building up this hype, and they keep telling stories about him. And one thing I didn't understand was he is infamous for if you cross him, he drowns you. So weird. Such an arbitrary, so, bizarre quirk that didn't really factor into anything but he's the wolf, on any level. He's the wolf king, and yet he... He's not utilizing wolves, right? I he, mean, he, retur- he quote unquote returns you to the sea. So why isn't he like, like the, the surfer, the or marlin, or, or yeah, something, the fisherman, something aquatic, yeah, you know, something yeah. nautical? Anyway, but that's that's neither here nor there in a movie full of strange asides. So while we're waiting for the Wolf King to arrive, we're kind of getting the backstory of Jodie Foster's grief-stricken past. She's kind of an agoraphobic. She doesn't leave the hotel, and she keeps seeing these flashbacks of. Her little boy running on a beach. And I gotta tell you guys, there's gotta be a moratorium on beach flashbacks. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, yeah. After Tree of Life, man, Griefy like, it's beach, done. Griefy yeah. beach flashbacks. It's, it, it's like an SNL parody could, now. They could take more than like one day with the little boy oh boat and shoot him in some other locale. I, I thought, I was confused. I was, I was confused too because I thought he had like stepped on a syringe in the water and then later it was like, <laughs> oh no, it was eating. And I was like, what? Well, this is, this is what I would call even even in a world f- full, chock-a-block full of grief beach flashbacks, <laughs> this is basic beach all the way. Yeah. Uh, this is the back of a, to- student of a toe-headed beach. Stu- student, student film, film beach. beach. <laughs> it's the back of a toe-headed boy running along the coast <laughs> laughing, and th- these very simple basic beach flashbacks are strung together. You get them little by little. And you, you first you see them running, <laughs> Jodie Foster's looking haunted. Then you see a syringe in the water, which, yeah, it's like, is he going to step on it? Like, what's the deal? <laughs> and then he's, like, running around in the... the uh, like pier? Un- like, under the, the pier. Boardwalk, the boardwalk, like, yeah. Under the boardwalk. And suddenly, you know, he goes behind a pylon or whatever. And they do, like, one of those wipes, you know, where they wipe the transition behind And the, the young boy becomes a face-down grown man, which... Then on, you can, on the beach still, yeah. On the beach. So but, he, you, but it was ambiguous because he was, like, lying, yeah, like, you know, on his side or face first, but really it was unclear, like, you know. Like, so, anyway, any big anyway, she's griefing it up, and I was, I was with the movie, I was with the movie more or less from the get-go. I felt like it, it felt like a 90s CD-ROM game to me a bit. Like, you know, enter Hotel Artemis. And there's, like, kooky characters in every room. It seemed like it would lend itself well to that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And Dave Bautista is great as, like, her mm-hmm. security guard. He's mm-hmm. always great. He's yeah, he's so reliable. He, he's solid, yeah. And he and he and Jodie Foster kind of have a mother-son, but also kind of a romantic. Like, they well, have some chemistry. Tension. There's a little tension there, yeah. It's and, good. I mean, they're my favorite unexpected couple since mm-hmm. Cuba Gooding Jr. and Helen Mirren and Shadow Boxer. <laughs> like, I was definitely getting vibes where I'm like, why am I kind of turned on by this interaction? <laughs> <laughs> like, I need to explore that inside myself. Yeah. But anyway. I could see that too, though. It was good. That was a highlight. It was I, a bright spot. I was enjoying the characters. Like, Charlie Day, who I usually hate, was playing kind of this uh, almost Trumpian minstrel <laughs> of yeah. a, yeah, of it was a pretty character. On the nose and over the top. I, I couldn't take it seriously. I was no, like, no. I was yeah, like was... man, they could have cast any. I mean, you can cast Charlie Day, but not in that role. Like, it's, in that it's role, a weird, it's, weird it's off. It's, it's a, a little, choice. the reach doesn't meet the grasp. But I thought the writing was interesting. Everything's like kind of hard-boiled 50s. It's not of this time. It's in the future, but of the past kind of dialogue. Yeah, the the, the building that it takes place in downtown is very Art Deco, like Eastern yeah. building yeah. style. So I was with it. Like, they were they were showing me things from a, a kind of a different angle that I'm not used to, and it was kind of interesting. But where it kind of started to lose me, or lost me completely, <laughs> and I wasn't alone in the audience was when the nurse sees Jenny Slate as a cop out on the street, and one of her rules is never bring in a cop, because cops are, like, you know, yeah. the, the bad guys in this topsy-turvy world. <laughs> and through the security camera, she's like, I know your son, or whatever <laughs> she says. So she brings her in, and Jenny Slate's all woozy on, you know, on these painkillers. And that's that's a that's a problem... When you have a talky, like, kind of 
slow build movie. Like even if you're gonna have action firework and fireworks when the Wolf King shows up eventually, you can't have a woozy character falling asleep like delivering exposition there was yeah this movie had a lot of exposition there was the most clunky like it did not come out when she was talking to jodie foster Uh. about knowing her her beach bound (laughs) little boy there was the most glorious yawn in the audience yeah yeah. and bisky you heard this it was just a completely (sighs) unself-aware it was perfect yeah. It was beautiful, and it was right on time. I, I groaned a couple times. That was one of them, for sure. I, after seeing this movie, I would like to take one of Jodie Foster's cool little laser scalpels and remove the entire Jenny Slate character from this movie and see how it plays. Yeah, there's too many characters. Yeah. You don't need it. You don't yeah. need it. We already Give us more s- Dave Batista, yes. if anything. Yeah. Have her confide in Dave Batista and not this random cop character. I don't think it does anything for the movie. Because Jodie Foster eventually gets more information about her son, and it doesn't involve this cop at all, at all. No, oh, yeah. So adds nothing to it. I yeah. I think you could shave. You cut that character out. You shave about twelve minutes. I mean, unless the Jenny Slate character saves them at the very, very end. Which it's like I the one, was gonna yeah, happen. like the one person they're not supposed to let in is the one that saves their lives. But no, she never. She comes just back. says, "Don't feel bad anymore, Jodie Foster," and that's it. Yeah, what's her fate? I forget. She gets she, dropped off. She, she, she just she's gets just, dropped off. Yeah, she's like out in the field like yeah. to live, okay. to see the sequel. To live and die in L.A. So at this point, we'll just jump ahead to when the when the Wolf King finally arrives. Finally. There's other... Yes. There's other That's like when the movie really starts for me because yeah, I, was I, I, was waiting, fading, I was fading. I was fading. I was, I was like, like I, I need something to happen There's here. a lot of other intrigue, yeah. but nothing is uh, really... Like the rubber's not hitting the road. So Finally the Wolf King. Jeff Goldblum Ooh. finally shows up. His his son, played by Zachary Quinto, a scraggly Jeff Goldblum, a wolfish right. Jeff Goldblum. He he arrives. His son, played by Zachary Quinto, which I really enjoyed his performance. He, he was, was hilarious. Kind of an egg he, he bro. was great. He was like bro, like frat bro. It something. was really really funny. Yeah. Jeff Goldblum arrives and is just jeff goldblooming it up the audience was like it's like they you know saw what, an old friend you know what i love yeah. about goldblum is the more he tries to dial it down the more the gold, more the more goldblum he gets <laughs> the more you, know, gold. you know the more gold yeah. yeah you get a short but concentrated dose of pure goldblum 24 just, karat just goldblum fist, fistful of gasoline on the campfire it's great yeah. it's great Everything he does is great in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> every 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 line delivery. I thought his his just general performance was going to be the salad dragon. It, oh yeah, but no. it wasn't quite. Well, they pump him full of ten milligrams of benzoid, so he's so he gets into this. No, tooth. thirty. Ten makes you oh, talk yeah. it. Oh, okay, thirty okay. makes you tell the truth. So yeah. he was dose. And yeah. and he's just. Uh, having a real fun time mumbling through his lines. <laughs> Speaking Jeff Goldblum yeah. j- gibberish. Yeah, Jeff Goldblum jive. And so it's during this sequence that Jodie Foster gets the truth about her son, that her son apparently attempted to steal his car, and then he, being being the Wolf King, had to do what he does and return, return, return him to the scene. <laughs> return him to the scene. <laughs> Dude, what is that? How does that work? I don't understand. You would think the Wolf King would just feed you to the wolves, oh, right? Yeah, like like literally in a pool wolves. of wolves, like an empty pool full of wolves. <laughs> That's great. See, that makes more sense. Yeah, the diving board's the plank. Hello. Yeah, if you have to have it water-related somewhat, <laughs> put the wolves in a pool. Anyway, so she figures that out. Um, there's this kind of femme fatale assassin going around, which I did really enjoy this detail, detail and I wish it was kind of the plot of the entire movie, or a movie, which is she's an assassin for hire, and there's a rich, like, company mogul in Detroit that is paying her to kill Jeff Goldblum while he watches through her eyes and masturbates. But they never establish who that client no, is, right? they don't. That should have been Johnny Depp. It yeah, should have been somebody... <laughs> I thought it, I thought it was going to be someone staying in the hotel, like, in another room sure, or sure. something. I but, wish they would have cut to him when she's... But, yeah, you don't tie it in. The they act. don't tie it into anything, so it doesn't no. work so dramatically on any level. Unless Zachary Quinto's son's character was watching the feed or that something. That would have been great. Yeah, like, give us something to Why hang not? our hat on, but it's so... Yeah, Why not just, tie that in? Formless. Yeah. 
Quinto doesn't have a reason to exist other than just to bro out and be kind of entertaining. Aggro, yeah. So, like, dial him into the plot anyway. But I liked that as just kind of a notion. Yeah, it's a quirky little idiosyncratic thing of the future for sure. Like, yeah. like strange days almost. Sure. It, very strange days. So then, uh, I don't know, shit just goes down. Once the Wolf King gets killed... The femme fatale blows the power, which has a chain reaction of things that it fucks up in the hotel, and it's just a bloodbath. It's just, there's there's fights in the hall, there's electric scalpel cuts, there's Dave Batista going ape shit, all the while... There's a riot going on There's a outside. riot going down. Yeah, that's another thing, that all of Los Angeles is engulfed in a riot due yeah. to privatized water and like lack of water on june 21st 2028 2028 yeah you can feel that they're trying to crank it up so you know the slow burn build culminates in this crescendo with a lot of different fronts moving in on each other and i mean it kind of works you feel when it when the movie flips into kind of diehard action mode and it's welcome completely welcome at least for me like what did you guys yeah, think well about? yeah i mean because it's not really... You can't sell it as an action movie. Like the that's action why... Movie. Yeah, that's why the snops was so funny. Yeah. It's right, like, there's no high works. octane. It's, it's very nice. low. It's very low. low. It's, it's very... Drums. It's very... It's very, yeah, low octane. It's a and steady character. It's, it's, it's a sci-fi drama. It's a, it's a sci-fi character drama, yeah, set in the not-too-distant future, for it's sure. It's a sci-fi drama drip in for your sure. IV tube. <laughs> I mean, I, I had trouble connecting with the film from the opening scene because, to me, like, uh, when you're doing a bank robbery... Like, that's instant drama, and it's so easy to get tension out of it. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, just the way they started in Medius Race, like, they're already in the midst of it. I was like, wait a second. It was like, a low octane. Uh, yeah, I was like, yeah. you don't even want to film them, pull up to the bank, and then, like, run in. I mean, that's the funnest part. Like, that sets up, like, everything. And then all of a sudden it goes wrong, and they got to go to the Hotel Armors. But instead, it's already gone wrong. To be so, fair, I don't think the movie could afford to be outside that much. Yeah, it's very contained. <laughs> well, yeah, we it's very... It's very uh, we were stuck in the Artemis. Low, low scale, I guess, yeah. but small scale. But, yeah, I just, from the start, was, like, not uh, taken in by the story or the world like I, I i didn't again like i feel if it was contemporary and it was more you know realistic or grounded in a relatable reality i would be way more interested but like yeah since it's essentially it's the brink an upgrade of, world yeah it's like the brink of apocalypse it's like all right well i can't really relate to that yet even though that is oh, very dude. seemingly re real i got some links for you to read yeah, yeah, bro no no but <laughs> <laughs> but so I started drifting, and then when it finally kicked into yeah the the Wolf King, and and then later like the whole climax, and I, I use that word very lightly, it, it kind of just like it it it, it was uh, anticlimactic. It just sort of happened, and then it was over, and I just kind of yeah like it felt really flat to me. Agreed. Would you say it fell flat? Yeah, that's kind of your your catchphrase. Yeah, it fell flat like a fish <laughs> on a beach, you know, like like a was dead it junkie. a student film? No, I mean, maybe a little, maybe a little, but it was really underlit, or the, pre no, the, the projector no, was, bulb was, was too dark. Like, like no. it was hard, again, like, I know I'm an old man, no, but I no. can't stand these low No, nope. it's low, it's, it was a projection issue. And if I'm the studio, and I'm paying the money for Jodie Foster and Sterling K. Brown, which I assure you, like, are not cheap, but... You want to see their eyes, like you want to be able to see the magic if, and and the and the soul of the eye. If you can't see what's going on in the eyes, then you're not really going to be interested in what you're watching. And then when you have like a big action hallway scene, like where where this woman's throwing scalpels, it's like I need to see what's going on because if I don't, then I don't care. Then I'm falling asleep. You know, like I'm tuning out. If Brother Justin were here, he would have raged something fierce. Uh, but we were either too stoned or too complacent to do anything. It was definitely way under projected and i think this isn't a radical theory but as theaters are experiencing more and more of a downturn of attendance although tonight was five dollar tuesday so the theater was hilariously packed, packed. <laughs> um although i did hear someone sleeping at one point sure I mean. sure but i think theaters are trying to save their bulbs you know yeah. they're like we don't know we're living paycheck to paycheck we're going to, you know, something that's probably shot dark already as it is, like old Fartimus, you don't stand a chance. 
the production designer m- would be pulling their hair out. Like, you yeah. can't see anything. No, this was worse than Han Solo dark level darkness for me because I had trouble watching that in terms of the darkness. And people are like, oh, well, it's shot that way. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure it but is. It's but it's also... But they're, but they're losing more with the projection it's because up. it yeah. was really fucking dark from start to finish. And well, I don't think it took place during the day either because, yeah, it's one night there, but it's still just... The- Dark. All the more reason for us to, as a podcast, spread our legs and wings and whatever and go to different theaters. Yes. Because Burbank, this is... They're, they're on the, the 16's in trouble. I feel like the 8 or the 6 might be better, but I feel that the 16 is overextended, and you're right. They don't have the, the money This is like a McDonald's with a one-star Yelp review. Yeah. It's, AMC it's, it takes general. a beating too much, yeah. yeah. AMC in general seems to under-project, in my opinion. Yeah. But no, anyway, you're right about them saving the bulbs. Though, let's put a fucking cap on the Fartimus. Yes. The salad dragon scene. The salad dragon scene. It came, man. You know when it comes. You can feel the winds <laughs> blowing the air into your mouth. And this being the the home of the original salad dragon, Oprah Winfrey and her oh, wrinkle in time. Yes. The, the we, original nest. <laughs> the cave. At the alpha nest. Um, you can feel, like, it's in the bones. Yes. It's, you feel it in the, the bones. The tingly from the head to the toe. Um, there's, there's a showdown with Sterling K. Smith. Brown. Brown, sorry. And uh, the the female assassin. And Charlie Day is shooting them with a 3D printed gun. They've, they've been kind of setting you up with the 3D printed future with 3D printed organs and all this. Like Jodie Foster utilizes the 3D printer a lot to apply her uh, fix em up trade. So Charlie Day's got this gun. He's like, I'm going to kill you. And then Sterling grabs him, puts his head into the 3D printer, and the 3D oh, yes, printer yes. mechanism just clamps right down on his head the, and starts 3D printing whatever program it's it's printing. And the theater just, like, screams. Oh, it's, wait. You thought that was a salad dragon scene? Oh, whoa. Well, oh, no, wow. I mean, I was, I, I, I was confused wait, about what the salad wait, dragon I scene thought, I was keeping my mouth shut. Wait, what did you think it was, Bishki? Well, no, now that he says that, that's what it was, but I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, man, no. I thought the salad dragon scene was when the female assassin straddles Jeff Goldblum and films, like, herself, like, slitting his throat. And he has this moment where he's like... So this is how I go out, huh? Well, like, send me down river, babe. And then she, like, slits his throat. And that's I was great, like, too. And that's that's, like, that's kind of rolled into Jeff Goldblum's entire performance. I'd say yeah. his whole performance and the 3D printer head crunch yeah. together in concert gives you enough protein for one good salad De- drink. Definitely. Yeah. I think if you excise Jeff Goldblum and just, like, have his character as a short film or short story... More power to you. Yeah, I was sad mm-hmm. to see him go because I wanted him to stay through the rest of the movie. Like, I, I could, yeah, he was, our, he was our comfort. Yeah, it would have been great if like Jeff Goldblum was like the surgeon and Jodie Foster's the nurse and like you know sure. Dave Batista's was, the Wolf King. I don't know. Like, it would have been great. You're right to have more Goldblum, especially Goldblum throughout. with Jodie Foster. I felt like it's this a good movie team. Yeah, I think they got they got great good. chemistry. It yeah, they were two pros that could handle it. Like they they were they were great to see together. What are we doing with the bones here? Mr. Bishke, what do you give it? Um, it's a writer-director. <laughs> you wrote it a lot. It feels written. It feels like a table read at times. It's a lot, a lot of lingo. He spent a lot of time on this script that's not very successful to me. Uh... I gave it one bone for Jeff Goldblum. One so, bone? Wow. Sorry, I did not. I did, I a was gold not, bone. One gold bone. Man. Yeah, you know, I uh, I didn't love it. Didn't hate it because of the Goldblum Foster, you know, from, because of the cast. I give it two bones. You know, it's perfectly delightful for certain people, but not me. This goes under the upgrade, you know, or uh, category of, like, great world. It's fully realized. The production design, art direction, it all ties it together. It makes it, you know, serious, and I get that that's what they're going for, but it's just not my neighborhood it's not my bag like i wish both upgrade and this hotel armatus were contemporary you know more quentin tarantino ish or elmore leonard ish you know although it is ludicrous yeah like a fake you know uh hospital or secret hospital hi- hotel but then again so is reservoir dogs with their their phony weird color names but it worked you know and i just want more of that and less of just cartoony kind of you know uh like sci-fi that's good to bring up reservoir dogs because we we failed to mention that Every uh, patient that is checked into the hotel, Artemis, 
is named after a different geographical region. Mm-hmm. So Acapulco, Niagara, Waikiki, Honolulu. So yeah, that's that's an interesting interesting parallel there. So you're at two. Mm-hmm. I just the spirit of it was got me going for a little bit. I it it carried me on its on the wings of its bizarreness for quite some time. And I don't know if that's because I had negative expectations going in, like nothing, like at all. And it pleasantly surprised me by bringing me back up to neutral. So I'm going to temper it and I'm going to give it a two. But there's a lot to enjoy. And if it would make a very decent double feature with upgrade at like a middle of the road revival theater house <laughs> yeah. yeah or john wick or john wick. or john wick those uh, are two those are two good double bills yeah i love jodie foster i thought she i thought she was the glue holding it together absolutely she was great um i'd like to see her in more things where the the material rises to meet her rather than her transcending the material because she can do a lot i mean i guess that's why she i was can so, do anything that's why i was kind of disappointed because i was thinking god you have jeff gold you got jodie foster but you're not giving him the scenery to chew on and with like hereditary it's like at least tony collette she had a meal you oh, know yeah. like she devoured every jodie line, foster you know? should have demanded a meal yeah like, at I least one at least, at least she, she should have killed goldblum you know she was giving such soulful eyes when she was flashing back to the basic beach <laughs> and i couldn't help but feel bad i'm like jodie didn't know that her flashbacks weren't up to par with her <laughs> looks and that's a really sad thing that's true yeah, yeah that's true and i think i think goldblum knew what movie he was in so i don't i don't yeah. weep for him that's why he was totally dialing it down yeah yeah and quinto was great and you know every everybody everybody was fine you know mm-hmm. it's just not enough not enough pizzazz you know not enough sizzle or set piece you know what what i kept thinking of one of my favorite movies which i think is a four bone masterpiece Uh-oh. which is i think a, a distant you know uh, relative or the original granddaddy of this movie is the tales from the crypt presents demon knight oh, with william four sadler bones? yes yes that <laughs> oh, is a masterpiece from start, from, from start to finish and it's a single location bunch of weird guests bunch of bad dudes show up and uh, it's the same dynamic you know except uh, you got jada pinkett instead of jodie foster go check it out they can't all be demon knight i want an <laughs> allegory for healthcare or something but there's none of that going yeah, no, they they almost dipped their toe in the water with the Charlie Day character, but then they stepped way <laughs> back. Yeah. They stepped way the fuck back. Yeah. Well, that's Hotel Artemis for y'all. Uh, I think you catch this. You catch it on the Sci-Fi L- Network late on at like night, a, late yeah. like Saturday at midnight, <laughs> deep, you're, deep in you're the fl- night, flipping through the channels, eating some Cheetos, and you're like, "Holy shit, Jodie Foster with a like, laser scalpel!" Yeah, you're like, "What is this? I don't remember <laughs> this. When did this come out?" And I think in that environment, it's perfect. Yes, yes, absolutely. Like you've had a couple glasses of something mm-hmm, or a yeah. couple puffs of something. You took, else. you took your Ambien or your uh, Xanax <laughs> yeah, prescription. Yeah, you're, you're, you're medicated and ready to check in. <laughs> Uh, I think that's that's the way to do it. But you don't need to rush out to the theater. This theater was packed, and it's it's hilarious that that many people were touched by the Artemis at the same time. <laughs> I love that yeah. it was a full theater. The communal yeah. experience, man. Doing something. Yeah, it was great. That's the Artemis for you. Artemis. Jody, we're all in it together. Jody Foster, we love you. Be in more movies. Be yep. in better movies. Until next time, in the oft-repeated mantra of the movie, it's easier to get in than check out <laughs> yes yes that's, that's it, it. <laughs> good night fartimus The diving boards of the plank, hello.